Hello friends and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to have a ton of impact as a support player in your games. Every draft's different, so if you, you know, can't do all this, that's fine, but if you can implement anything that I'm about to show you from one of the games I played today, then you'll be in the right step towards gaining MMR. So the very first thing here at the beginning is to go for a first blood. In the past, it was a little harder. It depended on what spells you had, what heroes you had. But now you can buy this blood grenade. And blood grenade plus any spell with a slow or a stun or anything like that, that's so much aggressive potential with just like one hero buying the blood grenade. So then you just need like two other heroes to attack and like throw out one of their spells and you've got your first blood aggressive potential. Keep in mind, it may or may not be a good idea. So for example, Slark came down with us and that's really good because Slark has really good nighttime vision. So if a hero was here, we would scout that out and we can all go, okay, go, go wrap around them and kill them, right? And they have no idea because they can only see to like about here. So if you are against a hero who has night vision, like Slark or uh, Night Stalker, then you may not want to go to their lanes, right? Predict where they are gonna be. Like usually Slark would be just like sitting here. Then let's not go there, you know? Let's make an aggressive play down here if we're the dire. But uh, for us, we're gonna bring our guy with a night vision. That's gonna help us a lot. And we're not actually gonna catch anyone here. Now in the past, uh-oh, you get your kill, you don't get your kill, whatever. It's too late to walk up here, right? You're gonna miss too many creeps, so you got a TP. Feels a little bad, your TP's on cooldown, you use a lot of mana for it. Now the Twin Gates, this is a lot less punishing, and that's why this is really good to do now. Slark and I are just gonna, we realize nothing's gonna happen, so we're just gonna head to the Twin Gate now. Ideally, we'd actually do it a little sooner, because we are gonna get to the lane, like, a little tight on timing. You're gonna see that's gonna lead to me making a mistake. So if you can get here a bit faster, uh, after you pick up an earlier kill, or you just realize nothing's gonna happen sooner, then it's fine. If you have to TP up here, it's still not the end of the world, right? We did it last patch, it was fine. So if you still have to do that, don't worry about it. Uh, now, for me, my focus this game, I wanted to like work on my focus on timings for pulls. So I wanted to come unblock this. You don't have to do this every game, uh, but it was a bit of a mistake. And you see me now heading over. Slark's getting harassed before I'm in the lane. And you may or may not be punished for this in your games, but the better players will punish this, right? Where, hey, this guy's alone. Let's just hit him. Like both of us hit him. Like what's he going to do, right? And that's why like this is how much damage Slark took before I even showed up to the lane because no one... Um, no one was there to help him, mainly me. I was not there to help him. So when Skyrath's hitting him, like, what's he gonna do about it? It needs to be me hitting the Skyrath or me hitting the Beastmaster so that at least they're both taking damage. But I was coming over here to like do this pole camp. So ideally you would do this earlier before the lanes meet or at the very last second. So I play this lane for like five more seconds and then I run over. The difference is gonna be that at least for 15 seconds, you can help play the lane. You can help get a couple creeps already and when you go towards the end, there's only like one or two creeps left maybe, and that's a lot easier to handle on your own. Um, but if you're right off the bat, like behind, that can be really bad. So be careful of that. Once they split the creeps, I knew I had a moment to come do this, so that's why I now come back over. Otherwise, you might have to stay in your lane. And because I see Slark had to pull the creeps under his tower and Beastmaster didn't, I know we're gonna be pushing, so I want to keep that in mind. Uh, and so if you ever need to do pulls, that's fine. You still gotta do it. I can make, I make a mistake here though. I should keep playing this lane because I'm not level two yet and I wanna hit level two from the creep XP and then just do a hard camp pull. I actually come for a small camp um, and that's gonna leave Slark alone and he's going to die. Now, many support players would be like, ah, oh, my carries always feed when I you know go do a pull. And that is true sometimes. But in this case, it's kind of my fault, I think. I Sure, he could have played safe and not die there. That's on him. But for me, I should have stayed here to get level two and to do this hard camp pull instead of this small camp pull. And things would just feel overall better. Now we're both level one. He's level two. This guy's going to be close to level two. And now in the 2v2, it's not even at all because they have the level advantage. Even if he doesn't die and I come over and do this pull, they'll hit level two. They'll both be level two. He'll be level two and I'll be level one. And that's still advantage to the enemy team. So support players, it's not always good to go do this small pull, right? Sometimes you wanna keep playing the lane till you hit level two and then do this. And I know this, but I just, I, I don't know. I just messed up this lane. Um, so anyways, uh, we're just gonna go back to like regular laning stuff. And this will depend on the draft, right? We want kills and that's what you're gonna see here. We're gonna use another blood grenade. We're going to throw out our spells, get a kill. Slark's actually gonna pick up this Beastmaster kill who chased me a little too long. And I kind of messed up here. I, If Beastmaster kept chasing me, I was gonna de deny myself to the neutrals, but I actually aggroed too soon. Either way, I would have tried to die here because I'm so low, I want to die and then respawn with full resources and come back in. 
Sometimes you won't get kills and that's fine. Whatever winning your lane is, that's what you wanna push for. And sometimes just getting farm and levels, that's enough and you're happy with that. Uh, you just wanted to get the lane to like a good spot and you know where that is depends. But whatever that is, aim for it and then look to the other lanes. So we're on a good start, right? We got a kill here, two kills, but I wouldn't say this lane is like free to leave yet completely. I still need to look for a good opportunity. If I leave it too soon, they'll kill Slark, and then the lead we just earned goes right back to them. So I'm gonna come back in, I bought another blood grenade, I think I bought a wand and then these mangoes, because I know I wanna fight, I wanna cast spells, I wanna be strong. I TP in, I'm gonna immediately cast a spell because I still have the fountain buff, so I'm gonna get some mana back for free. But actually, because Beastmaster is a little too far up and Skyrath was too far back, we can already do like half of Beastmaster's health by the time like Skyrath actually starts to join in, and we're gonna grab another Beastmaster kill. Whether it's kills or just pushing the lane, if you can do that around like the two minute, 30 seconds to three minute mark, that's really nice because now you're gonna pick up the Lotus. We're not gonna do it because we're bad. We're gonna forget and we're gonna grab it in about 30 seconds because thankfully the enemy team forgot. So that's <laughs> bad on us, but you want to remember this, right? Um, and you wanna grab it because it is 125 health and 125 mana. That's a lot of free regen, free resources. So you see us now coming over to grab it and I'm escorting him, feeding him a tango. This is gonna make a difference because we started to build a lead. That lead helps us to get more things. This free, free, whatever I've just called it, the free Lotus, right? That's winning an extra step. And now we can use that Lotus to win even further. So actually we're gonna take another fight here and we only get this kill because Slark has the Lotus. So he gets a little bit of extra health. So here we go on the Beastmaster again. Slark pops his wand and then Slark is going to pop his Lotus here. And he's going to barely survive here. He's gonna have less, uh, right at 100 health, which is uh, what the, the, the Lotus gave him. He would have died here either to the Beastmaster or to the Skywrath. And then it's like, okay, we got a kill, but he also died, right? That's where you're not really building a lead because you're trading kills. And when you're behind, trading kills is good. So this, like if Slark had died here, that would have been overall good for the enemy team. So that's why getting ahead helps you get further ahead because of these free resources coming in. And that's at three minutes, that's at six minutes, and there's gonna be another one at seven minutes, which we're gonna see in a moment. But first, after this, do we want to rotate over? Yes, because now here's what I was hoping for, right? This is where it depends what's happening uh, in your lane. What is winning? What is okay to leave my carry alone? That's hard, I can't answer it all fully here, but if you get a kill and the carry's gonna be alone for like, you know, 20 seconds, that's a good time to rotate. Or if you got them to like a certain level where they can't die and you know they're fairly healthy and you harass the enemy so you know they can't pressure too hard, that's also a time you can consider rotating. So you wanna look for this kind of opportunity. I left an observer for him to like see uh, any like sneaking around stuff here. And then I'm gonna come bottom. Now, you also want bottom to like work out, right? So just because I can leave my Slark alone, but I look over here and it's like under the tower, everyone's full health, then I'm, I'm probably not gonna come over. It's not really worth my time if nothing's gonna happen. But especially if the lane's pushed out, that's usually a lot better for you. This time, even though they're under their tower, I saw how low PA was and that's why I came here. Do be careful if you come through this way, the, the tower will block off a lot of this, right? And there's gaps in these trees. So the tower alone cannot see past this. But when creeps walk by or when heroes are standing in this area, they can see you. But I'm just gonna wait for a moment for PA to be uh, kind of like distracted or my team to like do something to her. And then I'm just gonna come try to like frost blast her. So I saw her get slowed and I decided to come in and we're gonna grab a kill. I don't really need to do this. That's a bit of a waste of a cooldown. I went top, did a pull, nothing much was happening. So actually I just came bottom again. And you'll notice I bought more resources to keep doing this stuff. I actually should have smoked before going over because I got a kill. And because twin gates are such a thing, I put an observer like this to spot like twin gate rotations and that's catching on. So I don't know where their wards are. There could be one up here. There could be one over here. That's what this smoke is for. Even though it's nighttime, I wanna smoke and get through here. I, I smoked as soon as I came through, but if they had one on this cliff, then they'd already see me. Uh, so that's why I should have done it before going through the twin gate. But I'm telling my team like, hey, I'm here. Let's just do this. So Axe slows. We kind of overlap spells here a little bit. That's on me. 
uh, but we still managed to pick up this kill and so I've helped win my Slark's lane and now I'm helping win the bottom lane. I'm actually gonna come back top because now it's six minutes and 30 seconds. So I want to use my lead to keep getting ahead. So I'm gonna come over here and if any of the supports are here, I can probably fight them because I'm stronger than them because of the fact that I've gotten kills, I've been getting XP. Um, I'm probably a level up on them. Actually, is that true? Let's find out. Oh, it's not too true. They're actually also level four, but I feel like I have more gold. So overall, I'm still going to be stronger. Uh, so if you can get ahead and you're a strong support, you can come try to do this stuff. I have my boots, so I can probably run away as well. It's better to have a TP. So if you see someone coming, you can grab it and TP out. Uh, I didn't, and that's a mistake on my part, but if you're strong, then you can typically fight people here and secure the XP rune for yourself. And if you can, you're just getting further ahead. I talked about this in a past video. I won't repeat it too much here, but XP is tough right now for supports. So the more you can get, and especially when you steal it from the enemy, the better. Now I, I realized like, okay, this lane's completely fine top, right? I thought maybe B Smasher would like come back and never did. So I'm just gonna come play bottom again. And I would have TP'd actually, but I didn't have one. So I was like, I still wanna go. So I'll twin gate over you should be careful of this. So just because you have the twin gates doesn't mean you should always use it, especially if you use it a couple times like I have, right? Expect them to be thinking about this. And like, if they didn't have an observer before, they might now. So that's why I come to check and I put a sentry, but I came when I don't see any of the heroes up here and I, I know they're not up here, right? And what are the odds? There's four heroes in the mid lane, very low. So I, I should have known they're like in this area, but I still came through and I did this and I, I realized the danger. So I was like, I better get out, but it was too late. They already caught me. And maybe if I had frost shielded and then wanded, I could have gotten out before starting to channel this. But that's where this channel nerf does affect uh, you. I would have lived otherwise, or maybe if I TP'd home right away, I would have lived. Um, but keep in mind, if you think the enemy has vision there, don't just go through it blindly. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Mainly, I, I kept playing in this area. We pressured the tower. I did some stacking. I did some power rune stuff. You just want to like hit your six. I'm actually a little under leveled for the start I had. I should have been better about it. I, I spent a little bit too much time roaming, but um, you don't want to force things too hard. Even though I'm saying like build your lead, keep building your lead, keep being active. That doesn't mean like 24 seven, just run at heroes, right? You still got to get your items, levels, things you need. Axe needs his blink before he can initiate. So we're just like statically pressuring this tower, which we don't need like this jump and initiation to do. We can do by just like attacking. And if they run up to us, we fight them. I am now gonna come place a deep ward after getting this tower. And I saw them all mid killing my Slark. Uh, so I, I checked along the way. I didn't know they had anything here, but it sure would be awkward to walk through their vision, plant a deep ward and walk away, right? They're just gonna remove my deep ward. So whenever I want to place a ward like that, I try to check common areas along the way. So that's why I checked this cliff and it is going to protect me. And then I place one further. They might still suspect it because I killed their ward, but at least they won't know exactly how long I spent here. So like maybe I walked really far in, maybe I did this and immediately walked away. Maybe I put it right on this cliff. They don't know. Uh, so I'm going to put this here and this is going to help me uh, snowball my lead even further and I'll show you that in a moment. I have a smoke preemptively, I have my level 6 and I was telling my team once Axe has his blink, let's go smoke. Axe actually just ditches the camp, I love it. Uh, he, he has the blink on the way and he's like, I want to go right away. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to smoke up and we're going to go. That's where this kind of ward and these kind of wards help a lot. Cause now we see several targets along with any information we have from having the lanes pushed in. Now we get to choose where we go. And once we get there, we're actually going to do something because Axe has his blink. So don't try to make these plays too early. Sometimes you don't need blinks. It depends on like who's in the game, but having some kind of initiation typically does help. And so trying to force this too early can just be a waste of your time. But now that we have the blink, this kind of setup is real easy. I probably shouldn't have vaulted here. I imagined it bouncing off between the, the creeps, but he actually just killed them all way too fast. And that is good um, to get the kill. And if you're ever unsure, definitely just throw out the spells. But as you get a better feel for heroes and you realize like, well, I didn't need to really use this spell, save it because the more resources you save, which can be your mana, but it can also be just spell cooldowns that dictates how fast you can go because Axe has blink and call again. These are very low cooldown. We can maybe still make a play, but if we get into like a 3v3, 4v4, sure would be nice to have like chain frost, you know, and now I don't have it. So for 86 more seconds, I got to say like, hey, let's, let's be a little careful, wait for this. Um, so if I had been more careful with it, we could actually just be going right away right now. We kind of chipped at the tower safely and then I'm going to smoke us again because I want to go really fast 
in your brackets, obviously this will vary. So just go whatever is fast compared to like what you usually do and what's usually happening in your brackets. So for me, it means like as soon as this ability is up, I wanna go again, like that's how fast. I don't wanna waste any downtime. If you usually have like two minutes where you're like sitting down, like, ah, oh, yeah, I've had it for like two minutes, but I'll use it eventually, right? Cutting that down to one minute, that's a step forward. That's going to be good, you know? So this is all relative. You don't have to be like on the dot perfect, like uh, like like this particular example, but this is pretty good to do so that by the time we find a target, my ult is up and there's barely any downtime. Um, but of course you need teammates who are like gonna do that with you. And that's why I understand like depending on your bracket, right? It may not be easy to do this even if you want to, uh, but whatever you can do to like speed it up, that is still going to be good. So we make this play. Now I get to use my ult. It's gonna get us a Beastmaster kill. And I think we even pick up one more here. Yeah, we get this Jakiro and again, should we just go again? Should we go fast, fast, fast? No, I just used my ultimate. Other people use their spells. I'm low on resources, right? We need to wait. We need to have what we need before we go again, but we do want to go again. So kind of figure out that time for whatever your hero is, whatever your team is missing, understand it like, okay, maybe it's about 80 seconds for us so I can have my ult again. And in 80 seconds, I wanna do whatever I need to as a support, maybe warding, de-warding, stacking, stuff like that. But I also need to make sure that in 80 seconds, I am mostly healthy and I have enough mana to use all my spells. So if I just went to go AFK farm right now and I just blast out all my spells, then my ult comes up and I was like, wait, actually I need a clarity and then I need like 30 seconds, you know, uh, maybe I just watch the fountain, right? That's more downtime. So as soon as you finish one thing and you have this moment, right? Heroes are dead. Think, what do I need? When is my time frame? Okay, I have like 30 seconds to farm. I should probably go back and then TP out and then that'll be, that'll be around the right time. Uh, so the more you think about this, the faster it gets to do. And that's how you can like continue to speed up your tempo and have impact uh, through these like repeated plays. Just as one more example, jumping ahead, I have my ultimate, I have my smoke ready. You don't wanna like get to that mo moment and realize like, oh, I wish we had a smoke. Let's wait 30 seconds for the smoke to come out, right? I have it, I'm just waiting for the opportunity. I let Axe push out the wave and then I'm gonna smoke us. A little unlucky, someone's actually like standing right here. I, I actually didn't tell him, otherwise he probably would've stepped back. I just kinda like did it on my own. Uh, but the idea here is that you're pushing in one wave, so you're gonna see some heroes here defending or not defending, right? We have some deeper vision here and here, and my team is pushing in the top tower, so people are gonna probably respawn. We did check for vision on this cliff, but people could always put it in a sneaky spot, right? So if we don't smoke and they have vision, they're all just gonna back away. We probably will take this tower, which is cool, and so it's still good, but if you can get kills and then get the tower, that's a little better. And that's why I'm okay just throwing another smoke. Uh, we're not a pro team, right? We don't need to wait for like, oh, we need to wait for like the perfect Roshan smoke objective, stuff like that, whatever. It's a pub game. Everyone just sits on this stuff anyways. So if they had vision here, I had smoked us and it you know, didn't get popped here by that Omni Knight who is hiding like right at the edge. Then if they have vision, we go through it. They don't know, we get a kill. If they don't have vision, yeah, sure, you didn't need to do it, but you don't know. So I think it's fine to use smokes like this. And I think it's really good for supports to always be buying a couple pretty off cooldown. Like, see, I'm out of them, right? But look, how, look what that's led to. A 7K lead here at 17 minutes. Maybe we can't make smoke plays for a little bit and we have to be more conservative going forward, but we're so ahead that even if they see us coming, we're probably gonna win that fight or they have to run away. Uh, so that's the last thing I wanna show you for this video. You can see the net worths, we're all doing pretty well. Uh, of course, as is customary, my team throws a little bit, uh, makes the game a little harder, myself included, but in the end we do win and that's not really the important part, right? Like even if you lose this game, undeniably, I, as a support, have had a lot of impact here by the 17 minute mark. I have helped my team get really ahead. I, I won both side lanes uh, through my actions, not saying my teammates didn't do their part, right? But like I helped by going between the side lanes, by buying the right items, the regen for what I wanted to do. I had the smokes ready. I got this arcane ring for like the mana for the team. I did some stacks to speed up their, their tempos, right? This is the stuff you want to look for as a support player in this fast paced meta, you know, buying items like Pavis, Force, Glimmer, uh, these early items that help you take these kind of fights that keep your team uh, healthy and topped up to uh, fight. 
this is all really good right now and uh we can talk more about mid to late game strategies in another video but you know tormentors into roshan something like that is going to be very safe so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you need like more advice on these topics i know you won't always be playing lich but many of the best supports right now will be able to do similar things to what i did if you need ideas for those heroes go check out the videos that i made on the uh, the best supports right now thank you see you in another video bye